overall, uh, you can read, if you want to know the facts of the uh, Paris Agreement, you can read a lot of infographic, very uh, simple one on um, web, uh, websites, or you can even read uh, Ms. Nina's um, analysis, I think it's very helpful. Uh, so, um, in the Paris Agreement, um, personally, I think, like what you're doing and Nokia just say, um, the very important thing is um, the equity and the CBDR principle is kept inside. And then um, they recognize the importance of uh, continuous and predictable uh, financial resources for the uh, implementation. And uh, all these things you can read up. Um, so I would like to share more about like um, uh, of the impacts on the public and the youth. So personally, um, I think uh, the COP21 actually raised uh, awareness of the public about like the climate policy because <coughs> a lot of people that doesn't know about the climate policy. I mean, in Malaysia, it's very um, obvious that like, a lot of people they know about climate change, but they doesn't know about what's happening, like what what the countries are doing uh, together, work or sort of in solidarity to come up with this kind of agreement and um, come to a consensus to do uh, everyone work together. So I think uh, because this COP twenty one is. Um, comparatively, a uh, um, larger, like, um, how to say, it's most people see it as more significant because it's like a milestone. Like um, we have agreed to come out with an um, agreement by um, 2015. So um, the impact is very big, and a lot of like youth. I think for COP21, a lot of youth delegation from different different countries attended it. So um, on social media and websites, more information is. Uh, available, so I think uh, that's much more awareness raised about it. You have meme in um, Instagram and um, you know, so Tumblr, all the social uh, media. So it's more information available at that time. So the impact is bigger. So more uh, people can get to know more about it. And another thing is, I personally personally feel it, it's a very strong impact. Like. Um, the COP21 is not only a convention for the countries to come together and to, um, to, to discuss about this climate change agreement, but also a very good uh, platform for the uh, civil society organization to come together and share, share their experience and what they are doing in their own countries together. Because when you share all this among each other, you actually recharge each other because when you go back to your own countries, you actually fight like you you, you have to do something like uh, your public in your countries doesn't really um, care about it and you, you feel very tired or yeah then so when you go there you meet people uh, like-minded people and um, listening to what uh, other people are doing like great jobs of uh, uh, climate movements then you feel very pumped up to bring all this back to your own uh, country. So I think this is an achievement for the youth who participated in that. Uh, so you can know people and, and get very encouraging inspiration that you can bring back to your own society. So Jerry is quite optimistic. So I wonder how vocal the Southeast Asian youth were at COP21 and why they were youth activists that say that it was a failure for COP21. Um, uh, uh, I'll address the uh, Southeast Asian youth first. Uh, so, from what I see, the Southeast Asian youth is not very active yet in the core processes because um, there's a, a lot of obstacles and barriers for us. Like, uh, funding is the is the very important thing. Like, for us to fly to Paris, um, to go to so far, and you have to stay there. The exchange rate and Funding is a very important thing that all, a lot of global South countries youth, uh, I would say, uh, civil society organization is facing. So um, without funding, it's really hard for you to go to part, even participate in that. So another thing is the badges. Like for us to go to the COP21, we need like, badges, a pass to go into the uh, venue. So it's limited. So um, we are very lucky. So for our delegation, we only get our badges in a few days before we reach Paris. So it's it's very uncertain. Things are very it's, um those passes are very uh 
uh, I would say limited and scarce. <coughs> so um, we are very lucky because our uh, minister, uh, our minister of uh, natural resources and um, uh, environmental, are uh, willing to be more transparent. So this year they um, grant us a few um, national delegates badges, which allow us to go into the some of the coastal negotiation. Uh. So this. All these things are blocking the youth to go, their efforts to go to this kind of um, um, international conference. So, like from Southeast Asia, only a few delegation, I think it's less than five, like in the delegation in the group, who attended the call. Imagine we have 10 countries, so some countries, they don't even have a youth delegation, so um, you say uh, youth participation is really, um, is not that active. Mm -hmm. We have some opportunities for the, um, the youth to speak uh, out there when we are in the court. Like for example, Indonesia, their pavilion have an event for the uh, Southeast Asian youth to present what they are doing and have a sharing session. Um, but, and also like personally I give an intervention, but uh, all this doesn't really make a, a huge impact to voice out, really voice out what we want or what we really are uh, concerned. But uh, one thing that I uh, noticed is the interviews are, are better. Like uh, we have like bilateral meetings with other youth delegations like from um, Australia, from um, other countries like Taiwan. So all this kind, we conduct interviews for every country because all of us want to know each other, what's each other doing, what's the condition of uh, every country. So I think this kind of interview is even better, even even more suitable for us to voice out what we really want and what we really think. So um, currently, like from my experience, I think this is the pathway that we can um, um, get our voice out. So um, in Asia, it's quite um, active, like China and Taiwan for youth, but uh, Southeast Asia is more scattered, like. A lot of them go represented, uh, representing their own organization, go by, like individually. So it's like maybe one person representing one organization. So there's no delegation, so the impact is uh, relatively lower. Yeah. But why it was considered a failure? Is it just the way it's been, uh, the, the, it's not inclusive enough, or do you have more comments on the women? Um, I will not say the uh, the the, COP, the uh, agreement is a failure. I think what um, they are trying to say is like uh, there's a lot of youth they are voicing out through uh, climate mobilization, right? Like a uh, climate movement. So actually, what all this movement is more about is like they are pushing the boundaries, like they are yeah they are voicing out what they want like giving pressure like all oh, what the uh, CSO are doing. So in the court venue itself, every day we have a lot of actions inside like a lot of people are holding banners. Um, yeah. Yes, we have like fossil all day, then you have an um, organization printing out their daily uh, uh, updates and newsletter, giving out pressure to the uh, like lobby to lobby the the negotiators. So I think it's not um, they are not calling the, the agreement a failure, but it's more like to push, <coughs> to push, to push um, what they want, the, the agenda of the, the CSO to, uh, for the, uh, the negotiators and national delegates, you know. So uh, personally, I joined a, uh, we call it the, the one of the largest uh, climate movement in Paris. So that time was the uh, D12 Red Line movement. So this movement actually is to um, to raise voice to, to, to defend the red line. Um, like what do you call the red line? It's like a minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The non-negotiable minimum uh, necessity for us to have a just a livable planet. So uh, that time, uh, one of our members was the main committee. To, to organize this huge movement. Uh, we marched from Arc de Triomphe to the Eiffel Tower and we, we, we basically it's a, a mass the obedience. Uh. So yeah yeah we, we, we sit in the in front of the we block the road and we have a 
100 meter long banner writing, uh, keep it in the ground. That means you want to keep the fossil fuels uh, in the ground. So this is uh, it's actually very fun because, uh, I, 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 what is it? Like? It's very inspiring. Huh? Like after you join, you feel very pumped up. Like, oh wow, um, everyone from different countries is like, seriously, everyone around you is like from different country, and everyone's having the same, um, same um, objective, same cause. Then everyone is working towards the same, uh, what well, the same belief, lah. So, uh, this inspired some of our members to bring this back to Malaysia. So we are hoping to do another one. Um, uh, after our, our power shift camp um, at climate education camp, something like this in Malaysia.